uh, last week. <coughs> and I am going to share to you about this is a realization and uh, I must from this personal testimony. What's happening, we can see mm -hmm. it's revelation, but another form of revelation because there is something happening and I am doing this to thank God for the things that He's doing in my family. In this whole ministry, I'm going to start because the time that Brother Francis uh, told me to stay away here in Manila to the city and proceed to the province, there's a big um, problem within my heart because I don't want to uh, be away with my siblings, especially also to my wife. So that's one thing that is a great problem within my, in my position. So as uh, time goes on, God is uh, dealing with me presently. So I would start this uh, in our message. So I hope that in our book, Monasticism, can translate it in English and in English because that's in Tagalog. So in Monasticism, how the way, how the Buddhist, the what we call this, the nuns, the monks, being monasticized for their own uh, good, especially in their heart. And one thing that I remember also is sharing with brother, uh, by a brother Francis to sister John, what's happening to this monkey or the few. And also, what's happening to my uh, Um. What is this? It's so sad on my first day and so on, one year, two years. Then I, while the, while on the, uh, while I'm on the field of ministry, I am doing something that I enjoy. The worthiness of my young kids, because. My father, my elder kids from the uh, first born up to the, because I have 11 children, uh, six of my children have already got a real problem because of Manuel is, is school. So sad to say, there's some people who are saying that Brother Francis is, uh, they are using, uh, they are using the pulpit to announce that Brother Francis is uh, teaching that. You don't have to put your children to the school, but you cannot find anywhere in anything that he say that thing. He just told me to cut because he had personal uh, personal uh, communication with me, but he doesn't do it to everyone. He doesn't prescribe it to everyone. So that's one thing that I want to mention tonight. So you must, uh, to all our brethren, please do this, what I'm saying, that every time that somebody's talking that way, please call them, give me an evidence that Father Francis say that, say so. But to me, that is a very, very effective because you cannot, in Romans 7, if you read this, you have to start Romans 7, 18, Romans 7, 18. It's so much damaging and so much damage that have been done to the member of the church, especially to the young people. And ministers, parents, are just, what we call, uh, they are just going to close their eyes for that matter. But the revelation of God was already given to us. How to make and do this to our family, to our siblings. So, this is something natural within our siblings, to our children. So, for I know that in me, Paul is talking 
Bilin himself, he's uh, portraying himself, being a Christian, being an apostle. He is admitting that, is, that there is something within his flesh, within his soul. That, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, where it no good thing. For to will is present with me. He but wants how something good. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. How about our children? That's why we have a Hukum Ministry, a training. Hukum Ministry, okay. Hukum Ministry came from the word Hakim, uh, Hebrew word Hukim. That means instruction is state. Uh, in short, a training. Training. Hukim. Hukim. So, there is an argument within this one. Uh, Brother Francis is teaching about this, uh, uh, what they call this um, doctrine of man. Because of what? Doctrine of man because he is suffocating or preventing the will of people. People of man. Yes and no yes. Because of this. Everyone has a freedom. Everyone has a privilege. But the problem is this. The prop, the privilege, and this is very clear to us. The freedom that was given to our children. And one of these is, uh, it was, uh, I experienced this by my own will. How to, uh, what do you call this, to go upon to this message. You are suffocating or cutting the free will of your children. Yes. You have to cut it out because of the earth in school. There's a lot of worldly friends and Bartadas or Shepherd friends. So what's the influence that they are going to get to those worldly people? So that's one thing that Brother Francis is telling that if you can, you put your children to the private school or Christian school, not to public school. Because public school is so much almost going to drain. There is no much, there is no, almost there's zero uh, good moral values. See? So that's one thing. So, the development of the free will of your children goes to the devil's way. See? Are, are you agreeing with me, church? Don't answer. Yes, no. Oh, oh, indeed. Okay. Do you believe in what I'm saying? Okay. So, but in our program, in the ministry, there are certain points in time that you are just um, holding or what they call it permanent uh, you are just to control in a certain point in time by using an offensive offensive training for your children before you give them what they call freedom in that time it takes, it depends upon your, um, how vigilant you are when it comes to this training. It takes this, uh, a lesser, lesser amount of time if you are going to be so, you are focused to this program. But if you are going to do this today, then not tomorrow, there's something wrong. Oh. No consistency. No consistency. Uh, thank you. No consistency. So it may take a long, long period of time. And maybe if the enemy can over power or overcome. And the training that you have given was will be banished by the devil. So, at the time that your children train, in offensive training, then that will be
be the time that you are uh, you have to give the freedom or free will freedom of your children to do what he wants to do then he will he or she will decide the better things can you are you following me Okay. So, in Romans 12.1, it is a very, uh, Romans 12.1, this, Romans 12.1, because of this, you know, my dear brethren, yeah. every time that I am living, uh, I am living case with my small siblings there, my heart was uh, breaking for three, one week that I left them. And you know, fetching water for almost four hours that, uh, with using a small pail to put some water to cook food to uh, um, clean the backyards and everything, the house chores. Um, it's so much uh, they, uh, for me, it's a hard thing. But along the way, there's something that I'm seeing on this. Their will, their personal will, that as, was, as what I read in Romans 7, 18, they want to do good, but there's something that lies within their flesh or their soul, which they cannot control. <coughs> That's one thing that this thing, uh, Romans 12, 1 was one of the tools that I use. I beseech you therefore, brethren, but by the mercies of God that you present. No, Romans 12, yeah. Hebrews 12, no, Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews 12, 1, sorry. Huh? I beseech you therefore. No, no, no. Genesis 12, 1. Oh. Genesis 12, 1. Genesis 12, 1. Ah, yes, when Abraham was... Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord hath said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great... No. That thing, he was in a good, good place. From... Uh, work. Work. Yes. But God told him to bring a more uh, malignant place. Huh? In the place where I brought my children, it's a, it's a uh, rural area, we call it malignant place. So, so 